okay so let me start again um, so welcome to this uh, uh, introduction to the course of web applications and we'll try to spend the time today uh, in uh, um, discussing about uh, mainly the organization of the course uh, with these uh, strange uh, you know modalities that we are forced to work with and uh, uh, of course uh, uh, we also will be open to discussing technical issues and questions on uh, whatever is needed at this point okay so uh, practically uh, the, the meetings will start uh, with your uh, microphone muted uh, but uh, feel free at any time to unmute the microphone so if you want to speak or to write uh, uh, in the chat, uh, if you have a question, if something is not clear, if you don't uh, understand, if there are any kind of problems or whatever. Okay, so uh, you can, uh, there are like, basically three ways to, to interrupt me, uh, just speaking out uh, with the, well, by unmuting your microphone, you should be able to do that uh, and, and saying something right in the chat or also there should be some sort of uh, functionality for uh, lifting a hand uh, in your in your profile for uh, for asking for my attention um okay so uh, otherwise we'll try to keep the the, the microphone uh, silent so that uh, we don't uh, hear uh, each other's noises okay so um where to start uh, i I can share maybe a couple of slides uh, from the initial video presentation. What is that? Sorry, I need some. Okay. And uh, uh, so that we can revise together uh, the main uh, uh, the main points uh, uh, in the course. Okay. So basically, uh, as we mentioned in the in the in the videos. Uh, uh, we, we are running the English part of the web applications course. Uh, in, I am uh, Fulvio Corno, the teacher of uh, the, the main teacher of this course. And uh, there will be two collaborators who are uh, Alberto Monge and Luigi De Russis that will help us in the, uh, in the labs parts and in the exercise parts mainly. Uh, in parallel to this, you know that we have the Italian course uh, that is uh, led by uh, Enrico Masola, and we agreed that we both uh, will uh, uh, follow the same uh, uh, program, follow the same uh, uh, topics, and um, so that uh, the, the the contents will be aligned, uh, the the slides will be the same, and so on. Okay. Um, the uh, main topics uh, of the course, uh, as I presented in the videos, uh, are uh, these four main blocks uh, here. And let me, sorry, let me put the chat so that I can see if anybody has a question. Okay, uh, th these are the four um, big uh, uh, chapters or parts uh, of the course. Uh, um, of course, uh, the, the, um, the final goal is to be able to develop uh, web applications using using React. Of course, let me maybe increase that so they can annotate uh, using using React. Okay, um, but uh, we decided not to make this uh, uh, a course about React. Otherwise, it would have been maybe much shorter, but uh, uh, would have been a how-to or a too practical uh, course about one specific framework. We know that React today uh, is very popular. Probably two years ago, uh, Angular would have been uh, chosen as the most popular framework. And I don't know after two years uh, in the future, what will happen about uh, um, web frameworks. Uh, so uh, frameworks come, come and go, and the popularity of frameworks uh, comes and go. But uh, the foundations of the web uh, are here to stay. So the architecture and the, the language that are found in the web uh, will not change uh, in, the, in the future. So that's why we devoted a, part, a good part of the course uh, or, uh, for studying the, um, the foundations, basically. And then we will move uh, on to uh, say more uh, practical implementation um, solutions. 
I try to, uh, for having more details uh, today, uh, to break it down into uh, a sort of calendar. So uh, the idea is that uh, the semester usually has uh, 14 weeks. We already know that we, we missed the first one, the last uh, week before this one, the, the 3rd of, uh, uh, of March, uh, we did not start the, the classes. So we, are, we only have a 13th uh, week uh, uh, left uh, uh, before um, the end of the course. Um, so we are trying to shrink every, every, uh, everything, all the content of the course in one less week. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we don't have the, um, let's say the boundaries or the constraints of the physical classes anymore. Uh, so we are not constrained by the uh, 90 minute classes uh, twice a week uh, and so on. And uh, uh, so we can organize uh, uh, the topics uh, in a more flexible way. So I call them virtual weeks uh, because they are not real calendar weeks. We don't have the real uh, lectures in the, in the schedule, but uh, uh, we'll try more or less to follow the same schedule that we would have uh, um, uh, followed if the uh, classes would have been um, in, in presence in the, in the, the Polytechno classroom. Uh, so what, what you see, uh, sorry, I'm missing a, a word here for the exam. The keyboard just ate my text, okay. Um, what, you, what you can see is that more or less uh, half of the course, so five or six weeks uh, will be specifically on uh, implementing uh, applications with React. So all the um, architecture and uh, all the um, techniques and libraries and whatever is needed. And the first half of the course more or less uh, instead is uh, uh, on foundational issues, okay? Some of these things uh, may be more or less known, so maybe some of you already started to study some, some uh, components, some language. Uh, I assume that uh, a computer engineer already knew, knows about uh, HTML, CSS a bit, uh, maybe even by studying on their own or by uh, looking around. Uh, so of course, uh, uh, we will be very fast in this, uh, in this part, but we we'll want to uh, recall more or less the topics that are needed to build, uh, no, uh, to build more complex uh, stuff on that. Um, we'll devote uh, a good time into the um, studying JavaScript uh, because we, I don't want just uh, you to be able to cut and paste a template from Stack Overflow or from the documentation or from an example and just uh, um, um, being able to implement uh, something by uh, copying a template okay we want to understand actually really what is going on and so that requires us uh, a, a knowledge of the language uh, much deeper than uh, to understand what's happening the, uh, is the knowledge that is required is much deeper than uh, just for implementing something okay so we we, uh, we don't want this to become a, a technical course about React, uh, as I said, uh, I want uh, in computer engineering people to be able in the future also to move to other frameworks or to uh, understand deeply what's going on to do something more than uh, off the street uh, pro uh, self-taught programmers or people from the street can implement in one month. So this is not uh, uh, reacting the 24 hours course, uh, but it's a um, web design course. Um, so after some good study of JavaScript, especially the, the most uh, specific or strange features. Uh, okay, for the video that right now we have only something very simple, but uh, it will become complex. And uh, we'll study a bit uh, of, the, of the browser, uh, especially in weeks four, five, and six. Uh, um, so how the, uh, the browser works, what is the JavaScript environment inside the browsers, the APIs, and so on. And uh, uh, so that we can, we should able be, we'll be able in the middle of the course uh, to create, let's say, a complete application using just uh, vanilla JavaScript. So vanilla is uh, usually used for saying uh, JavaScript without any frameworks or libraries. Uh, uh, so it's the basic language uh, um, uh, used for implementing the application. So, uh, so in this way, of course, we 
by using the, the basic version of JavaScript without any libraries or framework, uh, our productivity will be not very big, of course, uh, because we need to implement something for, with, using the standard libraries. But at least we understand very well what is going on and uh, what are the main problems. Okay, so that when we reach a framework, we already know which are the problems that this framework will solve for us. Uh, so we understand why uh, the framework designers uh, did some choices and, and, uh, and uh, what is the, the, the reason for some uh, maybe um, architectural decision. Uh, so uh, this is just for uh, understanding uh, better the, the environment in which we work and then uh, so that we can move faster on the framework part. So this is the, this is the plan. I hope uh, it will be successful. Uh, as you know, this is the first uh, uh, the first uh, edition of this course, uh, both the, in the Italian and the, in the English version. So um, this is just is a plan. But of course, uh, as we go, we'll probably need to adapt that. Uh, uh, take into account the, the, the speed. So we have an idea of how much time so the virtual weeks to devote to every topic, but uh, uh, only you know, the experience will tell us whether some uh, some topic will be shorter, faster, or some other topic will be uh, maybe um, slower and we'll need uh, to have more time. Uh, so this is the, the, the general plan. As you know, the detailed uh, plan instead is uh, uh, in the course uh, web page. So I hope you already uh, already saw the links. And uh, um, I'm trying to keep updated this uh, page here. Let me increase the font for you. Uh, this uh, page that you can find at this short link, uh, polito web applications one WA1. And in particular, I think the, part, the important part uh, here is uh, the schedule. Um, where I, I'm linking all the slides, I'm linking all the videos, and uh, uh, I'm trying also to make some previews of what will come next uh, in the next uh, uh, week, so that uh, you can have the, uh, everything linked here, uh, both on the, uh, from the slides point of view, both on the GitHub repositories where we published the, the exercises and the videos that you can uh, look at. So everything will be here in more detail. Uh, week by week, we will populate. We'll try to populate the information as soon as we have them. Uh, the format I'm trying to follow uh, is this one. Okay, so publishing some videos for the different parts of the of the program, and then having once a week a video chat, like today. Okay where we can discuss the videos and the topics that are that were published in the previous days or in the week okay um, so instead of doing the three hours a week of classes that are in the, in the schedule the, the schedule will be from 8 30 to uh, whatever 11 30 every uh, thursday morning we'll try to do only the second part uh, because we no, nobody likes uh, the early morning so we can start at 10 o'clock uh, every week and uh, and uh, i will try to publish the videos uh, with some days uh, before so that you can have time to uh, to see them before the video chat so more or less the topics of every video chat will be over the previous lessons so what have been has been done in the previous lectures in the previous exercises and uh, uh, later on in the previous uh, labs lab, uh, lab sessions okay i i hope you you like this kind of organization so but that one of the questions i will ask uh, in, in a in a couple in five minutes uh, when i'm leaving the floor to you for the discussion um, will also be whether you like this organization or you would like uh, to have more video chats so having live lectures instead of recorded lectures so these are uh, a question you should uh, start thinking and then we'll, you will give me uh, an answer uh, in a moment, okay? And so, and so we, we proceed. Um, so we are following more or less hmm, the schedule, uh, but we are not uh, really using all the hours here. Let, imagine that the first hour or two 
uh, is, is, is deleted, is canceled, and uh, is replaced by the videos. And the second hour uh, will be uh, organized in a, in a question and answering chat. So I don't want to make lectures here because it will be heavy. Uh, maybe we can just revise some topics or can uh, have some discussion about so your, especially your questions, your, your needs uh, and whatever. For the lab, which is on Friday mornings, we'll try to keep this time, so from 8.30 to 11.30, and uh, we'll start next week. So in the 20th, with uh, Friday the 20th for us, and uh, Thursday the 19th for the Italian course, we'll start the first lab. And so the, 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 the pattern, the mechanism, the organization will be the same. Uh, first, we will publish the text of the lab online on the course web page, some days in advance. So imagine that if the lab is on Friday, we'll pub we are planning to publish the text on Monday or Tuesday at the latest, so that we have at least three or four days to have a look at the text that we require for lab one, lab two, and three, and so on. And uh, you should try to start developing the solution um, on your own um, at the beginning. And then we will have uh, the uh, during the lab hours, so in this case, during the Friday morning from 8.30 to 11.30, we will have an open chat online for uh, your uh, questions and for helping you in solving the exercise. So the idea you can start looking at the exercise before. Uh, uh, every, every, everything will be uh, on GitHub, so you can uh, fork and clone your project and start working on that. Uh, if you have uh, some questions before the lab, you can start asking them. Uh, but basically, you know that we have these three hours on the Friday morning uh, where you can actually uh, connect, uh, talk with, uh, with some of the teachers, uh, uh, maybe show the code, uh, share the screen, and work together on, on, on the problems that you may have uh, uh, during the lab. So uh, the, the, the idea is that uh, uh, we come here in the lab, uh, in a virtual lab during the chat, uh, with, or with some questions that you already have in mind, some issues, some problems that you already encountered and you are trying to solve. Uh, from the point of view of the topics, uh, of course, every lab uh, will be about the topics of the previous week. Okay, so let's go back to here, to the website. The lab in on um, the 20th of March will be on the topics basically of the first week and so on. We'll try to make uh, uh, always the lab, uh, the, um, the the theory, the lectures, uh, one week ahead over what you need for the uh, for the lab. Uh, I cannot promise promise uh, this very strongly because maybe some um, uh, some topics of the last uh, days of the last week uh, uh, will slip into the uh, into what is needed to implement the lab, but mainly we'll try to, to keep this pace. Especially at the, at the beginning, I cannot promise it because uh, as, we, as we know, we lost one week. So our initial idea was to start a lab in week number three. And so having two full weeks of let's say, le lex uh, lessons and exercises before the first lab. And so having the first lab, uh, work on the topic of, of, of topic of, of topics of which of weeks uh, one and two um well we missed the first week so we need uh, to catch up a bit uh, uh the topics of week uh, we need to more or less to pack two weeks into one hmm? uh, so that's why the reason is uh, uh, i I've, i planned for the first uh, uh two weeks uh, more uh, content than would be uh, normally expected uh, if you have a look at the videos, this one is still missing. I will publish probably uh, this evening. Uh, I'm finishing to record it. And uh, uh, it, it will be, it's more than three hours. All of this together is much more than three hours. This will all, uh, only happen in the first two weeks, ideally. So the first two weeks uh, will be longer. You will have more material. It will, it's also easier, by the way. So this introduction part, so it's not very heavy material to, to study. Um, it will be longer because we had to catch up the first week that we lost. After that, the number of the, the, the duration of the videos in the third week and, and, and following 
will not be so much. So we will try to stay into more or less two hours video. So the idea is that this three hours here will be two hours of videos and one hour of chat, more or less. Then, then we can adapt. We need to be flexible. Right? It's the only weapon we have <laughs> against this uh, old mess that is happening out there, being flexible and trying to accommodate for the needs that we, you may have. Uh, okay, so this for the lab. Uh, of course, uh, the solution of the lab will be posted uh, also uh, on, we, on GitHub. So basically, we, uh, everything will be, sorry, on this uh, uh, repository in GitHub here. Uh, so both the text of the exercises and the solution after that. Um, I, I wrote here that the solution will be posted after one week. Uh, I'm, I know that you want to see the solutions to the exercises, so I'm forced to, to publish them. If it were for me, I would never publish a solution to an exercise because uh, these are programming exercises, so there is not one solution there are at least uh, 10,000 valid possible solutions so it's better for me uh, it's better for you to come up with your own solution rather than just looking matching what uh, we did as a reference or one possible solution that has been posted so uh, i will publish them after five or six weeks but i know it's too late and they will have a lot of complaints uh, but uh, the idea is that I will not publish the solution immediately because I want to encourage you to finish your exercise before looking at our solution. Okay, this is just a hope. Uh, right? Um, so about the material, basically uh, we should uh, refer to this uh, website uh, where I have links uh, to everything. We have basically links to the GitHub repositories where all the code will be shared. There are links to the uh, lectures that are uh, on, on YouTube. And uh, probably later on, we should be able also to publish them in the Portale like the classical video lectures, no, so the lecture that you can see on the app of the Polytechnico, for example. Uh, for the moment, we are not doing that because the technical stuff is very much focused on the virtual classroom. That is not working this morning, by the way. So I'm happy we are using Zoom uh, because other people are, are, are blocked right now. Um, but um, later on, I, 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 so all the technical stuff that are published in these video lectures are now focused on, on, on the virtual classroom. So they're not uh, uh, available to publish the, the classes. But I hope in next week so we can set up the pipeline and also have the these videos uh, available. Uh, the videos will be the screencast uh, that you prepare offline and also the recordings of the, of the video chat sessions right now. Okay, so I'm recording that uh, and uh, uh, at the end of the recording, I will also publish uh, this uh, webcast. Um, uh, okay, so I... I have a message in the chat. I will answer in a second. Okay. Um, so I I'll try to to make my introduction short because it's also heavy to listen to a talking head like this. And um, I have some questions from you. Um, but first of all, maybe I can uh, reply to the question that came uh, from Ricardo. And uh, Ricardo. You could also be writing the public chat. So he wrote me privately, but if you write in the public uh, chat to everybody, so everybody can see the question, uh, but don't be shy, okay? <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, uh, Ricardo asked me, what is the main difference with respect to the previous year's subject? Um, but let's me, let me do that. Let me do this for a second. Uh, sorry. No, not this one, sorry. This one. Mm, is it starting? Yes, it is. Okay. So the question. Uh, where is that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
the question was uh, giving an overview of what's meant the different with respect to the previous year subject, uh, especially for, uh, to what we will be able to do after this course, comparing with the other course. With the other course, you mean the older course. Um, it's not immediate to understand for that someone does, who doesn't know what it is React, and etc. Okay, so uh, there is um, a significant uh, change uh, in the way these uh, courses have been designed and are being reorganized. Uh, I think uh, you have seen this slide where we are just the first uh, point. So, well, the idea is that. Uh, we have um, at least three courses here that make the pipeline of web development. So we are trying to uh, see uh, the whole web development, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, um, environment and architecture by breaking it down into three courses. And basically, the uh, web application one and web applications two will focus on the front end on one side and on the back end on the other side and uh, um, in the in in the past actually the distributed programming course uh, so distributed programming one and the programmation in ambiente distributi uno uh, uh, it was split in two parts uh, one was main uh, let's say distributed programming like uh, sockets and so on, other, other network protocols and so on. And the second part was uh, uh, web applications in uh, PH, basically using the, uh, having a look at the server side in PHP and of course something about the client side in JavaScript, uh, CSS and JavaScript. But the focus was mostly on the server side. I would put an 80-20 uh, weight uh, like here. And this is only 50% of the course, while the other 50% was uh, about distributed programming. So what we did now is to take this part of the distributed programming, so the theory of the protocols, all the more complex uh, uh, architectures, into this distributed system programming course here. Okay. So the, uh, the three credits from the old DP1 went uh, and became six credits uh, in distributed system programming. And uh, uh, three credits here were totally redesigned. Uh, we, we have uh, basically not uh, uh, one credit, but six about the front end, or five or six about the front end here. And you will have, uh, five or six about the, the back end later on. It takes over the place of the um, course of application internet uh, that was uh, uh, in, in the past. So uh, this means that the focus now, uh, so in this course uh, is uh, on, the, on the clients. So there are two main points. The focus is on the client, uh, in the, on the client side. Later on, uh, we will, uh, you will, uh, if you want, if you take the Web Applications 2 course, uh, also study the complexity of the server side. Um, this is for, uh, and let's say maybe it's 90% uh, on, the, on the client side. Uh, and of course, the minimum that a web application cannot run uh, without a server about the server side. So the minimum, let's say 10% to make it running. Okay, so it's a it's a shift. Um, why is that? Why did we make we make this choice? Uh, well, first uh, um, because of uh, let's call it market demand, or let's call it uh, practical applications. What I mean is that uh, uh, this web application one course is the course that everybody in the computer engineering will have. And all the others are optional. Okay, so we ask ourselves, uh, if, uh, uh, okay, if somebody takes all the three courses, okay, very good. If one has only the first course, what are the most important topics that he can learn and that can be useful 
uh, in the future for for the work or also for the um, uh, for the other courses for the practical skills that he needs uh, in the other courses of computer engineering um, and so that uh, while we started from the client side and not from the service server side to give you some practical skills that you can use uh, in doing project works in other courses or whatever okay and since we uh, are focused on the, on the client side uh, uh, we try to mix uh, both the fundamentals as the fundamentals what is traditionally called the javascript uh, vanilla javascript development so without libraries and uh, a, a development framework So in the past, uh, the JavaScript part that was done in the old course uh, was basically uh, only a subset uh, of the fundamental part. So every, uh, it, it could not grow to a big complexity. The kind of projects, uh, as we said, were more focused on the server. And so the, the, the complexity of the client part was minimal, what the minimum uh, needed for, uh, for, for making it work, but it was not very strong. Uh, right now, today, in 2020, uh, most applications are very strong on the, on the front end. Uh, they are very complex, they are becoming very complex. So with all the dynamic parts that are shifting, moving, synchronizing, and uh, whatever you call it. Uh, and so just working with base uh, uh, JavaScript is not enough. Uh, you, don't, you cannot do anything uh, barely similar to a, to a modern application. And in this case, you need to rely on some framework, we chose one, and so it's uh, um, you will see that uh, say well, we we don't know what is React. You said okay, I'm I'm glad you don't because <laughs> we are trying to learn it together. Uh, but uh, uh, the idea is that uh, you have uh, instead of writing code uh, in JavaScript uh, as you like and try to solve your own problems there are already structured solutions to the main problems so if you want to update an element in an asynchronous way there is one way to do that and the framework is providing you the libraries to do that you will see that javascript needs to put together a lot of smaller libraries package them together and this is already solved by the framework by the compilation scripts and so on you we will need to mix a lot of html and the DOM objects and the JavaScript code together and the interpolate the values, iterate, generate dynamically parts of, of, of HTML and the framework will do that for us with a simplified syntax and so on. Okay, so it's sort of a, a having, having all the basic uh, problems already not solved because the code, we still have to write the code, but uh, we already know how to solve them because there is some uh, some designer would design the framework a library a set of libraries so if you ever work with the for example J jquery library you know that uh, uh, some problems that with java with base javascript uh, are very long to solve uh, well there is a one very fast and quick method in jquery okay in this case react is much more than that so it's not just a, a utility library but it's more of a something that uh, manages the life cycle of your application and lets you just focus and concentrate uh, on the components the visual components on their state and their properties and how they are updated and how they are linked so this is what we're trying to to do every framework is a different uh, way of thinking in a way about the application and application so we will learn the basics and then we learn how the framework is, uh, is working so in this way i think that this part is very very different from what we had in the past and also because the, the, the server part has been moved later when you also have more, more, more skill, more knowledge. You already had completed the network courses, you already completed the distributed system programming courses. So in web applications too, also the web part, the server side part uh, will be analyzed much more in detail. So we, at the end, we gave more credits to everything and try to align it to uh, today's uh, uh, say development uh, techniques and um, and standards. Okay. Uh, I lost I lost the chat window. Let me pull it out. Where is that? Where are you? Uh, chat. 
Okay. Uh, there's another question from Enrico saying that uh, every Friday morning, starting from the next Friday, from 8.30 to 11.30, there will be a, a video lecture for question and answering for both, uh, no. Okay, not for the, so the idea is that, so on Friday morning, we have uh, the three hours for Labinth. For the moment, uh, I, I'll, I'm still really not sure about what is the best organization. So we never did this. You never did that, this, this. So we are all experimenting together. My first idea is to keep the groups of the lab. So the first hour and a half, uh, only half of the students uh, will connect, uh, group one, let's say the first half of the alphabet. And uh, uh, on the second, 90 minutes from starting from 10 o'clock, uh, only the second group. Uh, in this way, we hope to have more chance to follow your, uh, to, re um, to answer your questions. So if everybody's connected, of course, in a question and answering, uh, it will be more um, individual question. I have this problem with my code, what is the error? Okay, so we must in some way form a line, a queue where uh, people are waiting for their turn to, to speak. And we think that if the group of people is too large, it will be very difficult for us uh, to, um, to help you. Uh, and so trying to make two different groups, uh, so uh, one hour and a half uh, for each of the two groups. This is what, just one hypothesis. We run the first lab in this way. Uh, then, uh, depending also on how it goes and what is your feedback and so on, we can change it. Uh, maybe we can make uh, shorter groups. Uh, maybe 30, 40 minutes uh, in which there are only maybe 20 people uh, uh, that can connect or maybe one big group of three hours, so depending on what, what turns out to be um, the best. This is also one of the questions. Um, uh, the, uh, another question is from, from Ricardo is, uh, uh, will we will develop something like a real case study project throughout the course. Uh, uh, yes and no. Um, we will develop uh, basically two projects together. Uh, one project uh, uh, will be during the lab. So uh, every lab will be building a piece of a, of a project. So everything will uh, uh, incrementally be built from the beginning, from lab one to lab number 12, 13, I don't remember the, the 12 probably, the last one. You will build an application. Uh, a simple one that will where uh, every week uh, we will improve it uh, with the new uh, techniques. Mm -hmm. So this is the, uh, and also in the class, in the exercises, I try to do the same thing. So instead of doing exercises or labs uh, on different topics every time, uh, we'll try to uh, create or define the exercises so that they can join together into a single project. So, the half of the answer is yes, we will build a project together during the course. The second half is no. <laughs> no, not really, because uh, the approach is different. One is uh, uh, creating an application a step at a time during the course with only the knowledge that you have until that time. So you are applying some knowledge in a given context. Uh, when you design an application, you are starting from let's say a starting point where you, you already know all the technology so you can build the design, make design choices and then implement the application. This of course cannot be done during the course, can only be done uh, uh, at the end when we have all the, all the knowledge. Uh, so this is one of the reasons why we, uh, I, I, I wrote here, I foresee that the last uh, week uh, or so uh, will, have, uh, will be some preparation for the exam. So let's say, to do an exercise similar to what you will have at the exam. Also the exam, since you are mentioned it, uh, why is that? Uh, we are thinking of a, n not giving you a project, a full project uh, to develop uh, uh, offline. Uh, that would be probably nice, but uh, it would be very difficult uh, uh, to present uh, and, and to correct because uh, uh, it's a lot of um, individual uh, 
time for, for checking all the projects and so on. So uh, the exam will be a, simplipli a simplified development of a project. Uh, the idea is that uh, we already give you a skeleton project. So uh, an application that only does the, um, the minimal part. So a skeleton will maybe have some pages, some basic, basic functionality, very, very basic. And then we'll give you a functional specification saying, okay, you should add this functionality to the project, to the skeleton. So I don't know, maybe the skeleton project will be something with a, a, you know, a chat project. Let's make an example. Something where the skeleton project, the, something that we already give you, uh, enables people to, to chat. So different users can write the text. Basically, with no options, with no freeze and so on. And so we, and then during the exam, we ask you to, I don't know, add uh, uh, private chats. So starting from one single chat channel to, uh, to be, be able to direct uh, uh, the message only to, to a group of, of users. Or to add, uh, I don't know, uh, likes, hmm? uh, feedbacks to the chat and so on. So adding a functionality to an existing, uh, um, an existing project. The idea that we have in mind is that we keep, we keep the skeleton for the session. So uh, the same skeleton will be used in uh, the first uh, date, exam date, and the second uh, exam date. What will change will be what we require you to do. And this same skeleton will be also be uh, the basis for the latest, uh, like that. I'm losing my own slides for the latest exercises in the week. So we, we will work on a project that we are already familiar with, but we need to be uh, so uh, uh, competent with the technologies in order to be able to modify uh, the project in this way. So it will not even, the exam will not be a full project because it will require two weeks of work. Uh, but it will be a design and implementation of one feature uh, on top of an existing project. Uh, it's more than, uh, like a, um, an, a sprint of an agile system. Yeah, you already have some uh, version uh, and you move to the next version by uh, having a sprint of two hours. And uh, uh, so at, after the two hours, uh, you will, uh, um, you will uh, submit uh, your work at the end. Um, Alexi uh, is very practical and asks uh, whether the exam is the only thing that will affect the grade. Yes. Yes, uh, um, we don't uh, uh, want you to submit the work that you do uh, during the project. You don't have to turn in any, any report, uh, any work. Everything will be in those two hours in the lab. So in those two hours, you download the skeleton, you implement your functionality, and you uh, commit and push the final project to GitHub, and then it's over, okay? We will evaluate the code. There is no oral, there is no discussion, okay? We will allow, evaluate the code and examine it and give you uh, the score. Of course, we can then discuss about uh, the correction or whatever, but everything will be in those two hours, okay? So nothing before and nothing after. So a very, uh, we're trying to be very focused. Um, uh, yes, so, um, uh, sorry, I had something in mind I forgot uh, to tell you. Uh, ah, yes, uh, since uh, we, the lab inf is only 60 places, uh, sitting places, and you are more than that, uh, probably, um, probably is uh, um, we need to make more turns, okay? So maybe there will be one turn at 8.30 in the morning and another at 11 and so on. And the different turns will work on the same skeleton, but different, different uh, of course, specifications. So uh, there's no problem of, of copying what, what happens because the skeleton is the same, is already known in advance. And uh, but the, what is required to do it will be different uh, for every turn, so we don't have any uh, problem with that. Okay, going forward with the questions, I see that uh, uh, Alessandro is asking uh, whether we need uh, 
the with WSL, I, they chose a name which is very difficult to pronounce, Windows Subsystem for Linux uh, version one or WSL version two. Uh, they both work. Hmm? They both work. Uh, the problem with the uh, WSL uh, one is that uh, it's, uh, it has mostly a slow input output. So especially when you're doing some operation, because actually the operation will go through the virtual uh, file systems and then will be remapped into the Windows system. So every input output will be uh, much slower than in the native, while uh, in the new version, WSL2, it's, this I input output part is much faster. Uh, it will not be a, a big issue in this course, uh, uh, only when you are uh, creating the project. When you are running the script, uh, like um, um, a React uh, create project, uh, or you are uh, uh, installing a lot of uh, package, for example, npm in install. So when you're running, we will see this later, when you're running uh, uh, something that will download and install a lot of packages, you will see that it will be much lower, but that's the only issue. For the rest, uh, both solutions are, are, are valid and as uh, uh, working with virtual machines, as do working in dual boot uh, is the same. Uh, just be aware that if you are using, if you install WSL2 in your computer, it's not compatible with, 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 with VirtualBox. So you cannot run both on the same computer uh, because uh, of, uh, of stuff like uh, with, the, with, with, with the, basically WSL takes over the virtualization of the CPU. So VirtualBox or WMware, uh, VMware, uh, well, what did you write, okay? Uh, are not able to uh, virtualize a computer to open a virtual machine. So this can be one possibility. If you need to use virtual machines, don't install WSL2, only one. Uh, if, you, if you want to use it, if you need it. Uh, for the moment, they are not working. Probably in the future, they will solve this problem. But for the moment, uh, this is uh, uh, it's an issue to, be, to, to consider. Uh, Roberto is asking whether at the exam we can access our own material or on a USB drive, for example. Uh, yes, yes, I forgot to say, during the exam, maybe it's written here, you can use everything. You can use the internet. We will, we will not close the internet. You can use Google, you can use uh, uh, Stack Overflow, search for example, search for your documentation and so on. Uh, it will be silly to constrain a developer only to work uh, uh, with what they have in their mind or in printed paper. Um, about, uh, uh, so you can have your own material, especially if you have it online. Uh, I don't like uh, USB drives to be used because they are too easy to shift from one person to the other. So if you have something on it, your drive, I will ask you to upload, some, upload it somewhere online or uh, at the beginning of the course, when you enter the lab, you will copy what you have on the, your USB drive onto the computer of the lab and then put away the, the, the USB drive. Okay, so I don't want to see electronic stuff like telephones and, and, and uh, um, uh, USB drives uh, uh, around during, during the exam. But uh, you can definitely use uh, all the material that you uh, created your, uh, by yourself or it's available online. Uh, the only, of course, thing that you will not be able to do is to communicate. We will fire uh, everybody. Uh, who tries to open a chat or open a communication channel or mail or whatever on their computers. Uh, um, it's the only strong rule uh, during the exam. So you can access whatever you find, uh, but you cannot uh, try to communicate with others. It can be, it can be easily understood. Right? Um, I, I don't really understand the question of Alexei. If one was to do for a living, was confident the skill, this course is two hours. Ah, okay, so you, if you are saying that if you already know everything, then everything, uh, then in two hours you can give the exam and pass it. If you already know everything, yes. Hmm? Okay, for, it's for every course. If you know uh, what is asked at the exam, you only need to take the exam. Hmm? 
so it's i think it applies to to every possible course uh, so uh, i i'm not saying that the the classes are mandatory or the labs are mandatory of course are mandatory or useful for for learning if you don't already know this uh, stuff otherwise uh, you will should probably try to understand what kind of exam what kind of complexity and uh, and of course you can come to the exam if this is your question i'm not really sure i understand a very practical question from francesco is it possible to reject the grade yes yeah i think so yes we decided i'm not so sure because uh, uh, of course we're trying to to keep the same rules uh, um, the same rules uh, uh, in the two courses, and um, but I, I think I remember that we decided that it's possible to to reject a grade, and so coming coming to to a second uh, to the second exam to redo the exam. Uh, of course, I hope it will not happen, but uh, it may happen. Uh, what is definitely not possible is to freeze the score. Okay, to make it say, like, like keep it, and then I will uh, register that uh, later on. No, I want to decide whether you take the, the score or not, so that at the end of the exam we can or the session we can close all the all the scores. If you have previous HTML knowledge mandatory in order to attend this course properly, no. Uh, actually, the kind of uh, HTML knowledge is something that you can learn in uh, 20 minutes by yourself. So it's nothing, uh, nothing complex. Uh, HTML basically uh, is very easy. Uh, what we will learn together, but this is more uh, about uh, what the page design and layout uh, will be how to use it properly, not just uh, low level. So it will be a lot of uh, uh, empty elements and properties and classes uh, and this will uh, something that we will have to learn because it affects how JavaScript uh, interfaces with the page mm. but uh, we don't have any any real prior or any complex prior knowledge or anything that cannot be learned in half an hour but uh, by, uh, by studying the um, some tutorial or some website um, Google Drive can be an option uh i don't want to answer to this question right now because we still have to draft out the the detail details uh, detail line um so guidelines okay so i just uh, i would say yes you can store your information on google drive but then it's a, it's a tool where that can also be used to, to share information during the exam with other people even from in, outside the uh, the room and so that will be a problem uh, I want to believe, uh, okay, uh, that we are trying to be honest mm, with each other. So I will give you all the tools that you need to do a good exam, to do a de uh, to develop uh, without putting extra difficulties that will not be there in the real world. Okay. At the same time, I'm asking you to behave honestly and not try to cheat during the exam. So I'm, I'm not sure that uh, technical rules or constraints uh, or a lot of detailed rules can uh, in any way solve this problem. So if I would say, oh, uh, you cannot use uh, uh, Google Drive because you could share the information, then maybe somebody else will use uh, Dropbox or we use uh, box.com or we use another file sharing system or we'll, uh, you know, put, ever, uh, put on a, a bit torrent uh, sharing uh, in a hidden way there are uh, we know there are always ways in technology okay uh, so i don't want to right now to have a, a detail or too long or too complex uh, set of rules uh, i would say the principle is uh, we give you the tools we fire you if you try to communicate okay um Okay, um, so there is a question from Enrico on state that uh, installed the node in WSL Ubuntu, it can install Visual Studio uh, as an extension in Chrome, WebStorm in Windows, or okay, okay, okay. Uh, one question at a time. Um, so first of all, uh, you can use the development environment that you like the best. So use Windows, use Linux, use the Mac, 
uh, you use virtual machines, whatever. I think that you are mature enough as a computer engineer uh, to, to select your development environment, the development environment. The runtime environment for the exam will be LabInf computers using Linux. So every now and then, you try to uh, be familiar with the Linux uh, uh, environment uh, in order not to have a surprise uh, during, the, uh, during the exam. So this is the, the target environment. The development environment is up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, VS Code, Visual Studio Code yeah, is a very nice feature when you can work natively, maybe on Windows, and then uh, it will open a connection to the virtual machine, so the WSL virtual machine, for example, and we'll install the plugins. Uh, uh, we install the plugins for the uh, for what is needed uh, directly on the virtual machine on the on the on the Linux machine. Okay, so uh, Visual Studio you can install a plugin directly from the front end Visual Studio, and uh, it will uh, install them into the virtual machine. It's totally transparent. Um, for the React developer tools, it's just a, a, um, a browser plugin. So you need to install the plugin where the browser is running. Yeah, the React developer tools are front-end only. So they don't care about where the application is running, is being served. So for example, if you are using WSL, um, then uh, the browser will be on Windows uh, and the server will be on, on the Linux virtual machine. The React developer tools work inside Chrome, inside Firefox and they don't communicate with the server, so it needs to be installed in the browser on the front end that you're using for debugging. Um, during the exam, there is not, uh, uh, you will have, uh, on the LabInf computer, you will have both uh, Visual Studio and WebStorm. So you can, Visual Studio Code and WebStorm, you can choose whatever you want. Uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, the exam is uh, something you need to commit uh, onto a repository. So if you write that in VI or in uh, Notepad or in uh, VS Code, we don't care and we don't see it, okay? As long as the code that you commit is uh, correct. Um, uh, the, the other question is, can you use Visual Studio Code directly in Windows instead of Linux? As I said, yes. You can also, if you want, develop everything on Windows. We're using Node on Windows and Visual Studio Code on Windows, uh, except from some Node packages where there are separate Windows and Linux versions that are not uh, maybe uh, totally compatible. Uh, basically, the development environment is more or less the same if you be careful about the paths and the spaces and stuff like that. So uh, really, we are developing, remember, JavaScript programs that would run in the browser mostly at the 90 percent it's the only 10 percent that is running on the server with that depends on the operating system of the server everything else will run in the browser and so it's uh, by definition independent from the operating system so uh, and the and the server part will be really uh, minimal so every kind of combination uh, is acceptable just keep in mind that the exam will be linux machines uh, LabInf, uh, they are using, um, I think, uh, an Ubuntu version with a simplified user interface. So in, in, I don't remember if it's uh, X Ubuntu or something like that. Uh, it's, I think it's uh, using XDE, XDE as a development environment uh, uh, on uh, Linux Ubuntu. Um, there's a question from Claudiana. Uh, where will, will we have uh, some simulation of, func of function specification? Uh, yes, of course. During the end of at the end of the course, so by sure, surely the last. Where is that? The last. Where is that? No. Yeah. In the last week, uh, we say preparation for the exam will be. We will provide you one or possible two possible examples of exams. So we'll do a simulation during the last lab. Will be for sure a simulation of the exam and uh, uh, maybe more than one, okay? So we'll have an example of how the exam will look like uh, exactly in the same, written in the same way. We will usually, what they do is prepare three or four different texts, uh, potential exams, and then sample two of them will be for the exam and the other two for, will be for the course. Mm -hmm. 
so uh, yes uh, the 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 the, fi the the final one or one and a half weeks uh, will be devoted for specifically for simulating the exam um, the question by simona doesn't make too much sense because wsl is just for windows or do we need it for uh, also in linux uh, the w in wsl means uh, windows okay <laughs> and so it's only a feature of windows if you are working on linux you don't need anything else you already have linux okay this is a trick wsl is just a trick a virtual machine able to uh, that enables you to use linux application in a windows computer if you work directly with linux do you need anything else um yes alexia already replied that okay I, I i mentioned that i had some questions for you also so i'm welcome that you are already asking questions but uh, yeah these are the questions that i had in mind so i at first a very quick poll uh, i organized uh, uh, as you said uh, uh, some videos every week plus one chat like this one every week uh, my question is uh, uh, you prefer okay for the chat of course we need to meet in some way in order to be able to ask questions answer and so on in discussion so this is uh, I think uh, there's no discussion about this uh, once a week we can meet for the videos my question is do you prefer the current approach with videos or would you prefer that the same topics in the videos of the theory the explanation will be done in chat in live form in streaming right now so should they make a video pre-record it and upload it or make a live session every thursday morning by while i explain the same uh, topic Okay, I guess that there is no one <laughs> who is against uh, uh, this approach, so we will continue in this way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, the second question is uh, uh, of course, all the, all the live lectures will be also, uh, also recorded. Pro uh, one one variation uh, one variation I, I, we could do is do some uh, definitely uh, for lectures I get videos uh, for chats of course uh, we are uh, now we are using Zoom or, or maybe later on when it works right better we could use the por the, the virtual classroom in the portal La Didattica. Then there is a third type of lectures, which are the exercises. Uh, so this one may be the easy one. We can do them on, on video with the pre-recorded videos and uh, might be the more complex ones uh, can be done in, uh, in, uh, in live format by chat. So that you can, while we are developing together, um, maybe you can ask questions or can stop me or I, I can ask questions and discuss that. So maybe some of them, we could do that in this way. They will be recorded anyway, so people can, can see them. But if uh, maybe the, the most more practical uh, exercises, maybe can, they could benefit uh, from this kind of uh, interactivity. But uh, I, I, I would say that, uh, yeah, this could be the, the, the setup. Uh, I, I'm, I would say not all exercises, okay? S some of them, because the, the easy ones are basically just examples that they show, so there's no really design going on, okay? For example, the exercises that I published yesterday are just me playing with different ways of doing the same thing or, or solving very simple problems. So that would not be probably very, um, very useful to make it uh, uh, interactive. But when we have to design something, starting from a problem and find a solution, the discussion could be useful. Okay, so we'll try to keep that in mind. Um, okay, uh, the second point is uh, uh, other students from other courses uh, told me, well, um, um, 
do we do you need a way of communicating among yourself or with us uh, some somebody suggested we create a group a telegram group uh, ah, uh, slack channel or, or a forum or whatever um, uh, of course e email is always possible but it's not very easy to follow or to be able to to reply to everybody and also email is uh, prevents you from from chat, uh, chatting uh, with each other so uh, let me just read your answers because something's throwing me out. Uh, okay, I think that uh, uh, everybody uh, will be happy with Slack. Uh, your, so uh, we can create a Slack uh, channel for you. Uh, you know that it's like, uh, uh, of course, we, we can create one. I'm already using that in other courses, so it's not a problem for us. Uh, it's a, there are channels where we read and we can answer, and you can also pre uh, create your own private channels uh, for discussing stuff, uh, bad stuff about the teachers that we don't want to read. Um, so yes okay so i will try to set up that uh, and uh, uh, as you say it's also useful for the notification so i don't want to send you an email or put a notice in the portal every time i upload something because it will be spamming okay uh, spamming uh, uh, when there are too many notifications there are no notifications actually so um, and so it's better uh, to have uh, yeah, notify them and it's also will be also faster to communicate to have questions so and also uh, for the last minute problems so if uh, video conferencing is work for example ye yesterday morning zoom was not reachable from the telecom lines so whoever had that telecom uh, with telecom italia would could not be uh, using uh, zoom um, uh, and so uh, as, uh, having a, a side channel in order to solve less many problems or getting notification or asking questions is okay. So I will create that. We also think about something more structured like a forum, but I think that uh, you don't like it uh, because nobody mentioned that. Um, and so let's try to do that uh, with uh, Slack and uh, using channels. Hmm? Uh, we can create all the challenges that you need uh, uh, so that uh, uh, we can keep synchronized. Mm -hmm. it, then again, this is uh, experimental. If you find it's not working well, we can find other solutions. But let's start with this tool. I don't want to have too many tools for that. Um, so there was a question about github is the github material synchronized with italian course yes yes we are using only one github repository uh that is uh where is it? what do i somewhere i have the link okay i forgot to put the link here or maybe in the first page No, I forgot to put the link because uh, because yes, but um, is uh, okay. It's on the slides, and it's uh, uh, yeah. So this organization will uh, contain uh, is shared between the Italian and the English course. So, for example, the slides will be the same. Some exercises will be the same. In there are cases, you know, you see also the face of Enrico Masala here, and uh, um, the um, in in some cases where maybe we can uh, the labs will be the same also. Uh, when there is something which is different, so maybe I am doing some exercise and Enrico Masala decided to do something different. Uh, we will call the repositories with the WA1 for Web Applications 1 prefix, so W1-something, and Enrico will use AW1, Applicazioni Web 1. So if you don't see the 
the prefix uh, WA1 or AW1, then the course, uh, the, the material the repository here apply to both courses. If you simply prefix, then it's only for one of the courses. But we decided not to split or not to duplicate the effort uh, because there's already too much effort in, in, in that, in this, in keeping everything updated. Um, uh, could we use GitHub to ask questions, uh, uh, opening the issues, for example? Yes, it's a possibility. The problem with GitHub issues is that uh, they are targeted. So if I'm publishing a repository and you open the issue, I get the notification. But maybe your friend already has the answer. Okay, so uh, um, it's not very uh, useful to work uh, in group, but you can definitely do that. So basically, there are too many channels where you can communicate. There will be Slack, there will be uh, the issues on GitHub, there could be the comment on YouTube, uh, but not, not all of these platforms are very uh, say, useful for, for giving support. For example, the comments on YouTube are very good for giving a quick answer, but for explaining something, you don't want to see the code, link it, and so on, so it's better maybe or. Uh, through GitHub or to Slack, uh, uh, we can do the better. Uh, by the way, when we create the Slack group, I will ask you not to send an email hmm? because we cannot keep, keep track of both uh, um, both uh, channels. So if we set up a Slack, and then all the communication will be on Slack for every topic. If it's public, you write in public channels. If it's something specific, personal, you can run, write a direct message to the teacher. Uh, but then we, we, we choose because otherwise uh, uh, I, I will get crazy because I will not be able to follow everything. Uh, so people have a different nickname on GitHub and different on Slack and different email. And so it's very, very, very difficult to, to follow the thread of discussions. But I will create the Slack and we publish the, the rules for, for that. Hmm? Um, there's a, Alex is also asking whether the new edition of the O'Reilly book is available via Polito. Not, uh, I'm not aware. Hmm? I, I don't think so. It, uh, is because it's not. It's in pre-publication. It's not yet in the library. Uh, it's available to the people that have a re O'Reilly uh, subscription or an ACM subscription. Maybe some of you are ACM students. But I know that uh, somebody is able to get to it. I cannot say anything more because uh, we have the recording going on. Um, OK. The other point here that I want to discuss with you is uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. So when uh, uh, I am in the classroom, I have the feeling of uh, whether I'm being too boring, too slow, I'm saying, too easy stuff, and so you need to speed up because people is already understand, they already knew the, some things. Or uh, when I see faces staring at me with uh, with open eyes like that, I, I have the feeling that maybe I was going too fast, or I skipped some steps that in my mind was uh, was uh, already understood. But uh, I need to slow down or to repeat and so on. Um, in other courses, uh, uh, I, I have a parallel course uh, uh, where, where uh, I, I'm also, of course, uh, working online like this. Uh, uh, but th that course uh, has an history of five years. This is the sixth one. So I already know when I record the video, where are the points that the students find difficulties. So I already know when to speed up and when to go slower because I know that in the real time, in, in the real classroom, uh, some people at a given point will always ask some question and all the uh, every every year will be the same questions okay so i already know i have the feeling of the speed and then and the difficulty of different topics this course is the, is the first one uh, so the first time that i'm recording that so uh, it's i feel it very difficult to uh, understand if i'm being too trivial too low level too simple i need to speed up because you are getting bored and getting bored is uh, is bad because maybe there are three important points and you're missing them because they are floating into a lot, a lot of trivial points and so you do lose your attention and so you should focus, I should focus. Or the other way around, I'm skipping some steps and you would need more time to, to, to discuss them. 
so uh, I cannot have the immediate feedback of watching you in the face while you are watching watching the videos, and uh, so I'm asking you to to react. Okay. So I think that Slack would be a good way. So we are open in Slack and uh, uh, feel free to say, to tell me, all oh, this video is too long. Uh, we already know this stuff. Uh, uh, it's very boring. Uh, uh, it's very it's too simple. Please skip that uh, or try to say, tell me, okay, but could you maybe spend more time in explaining this or in doing some exercise about some topic and so on. Mm -hmm. So we have, I don't have the real, face-to-face -face feedback, uh, try to help me by giving feedback on Slack. Mm. Uh, don't be afraid. Mm. I usually don't remember the names of people. So don't be afraid that if you say something, then at the exam I will remember, I will punish you. It's not my life, okay? Life is too short for remember uh, vendettas or something like that. I, I really, I really something that I will appreciate if you can help me in tune the speed uh, of the videos and of the exercises. So this is something I'm asking for you. So uh, I think uh, you can write it by mail or better uh, by, um, by, by Slack. And of course, uh, contacting the teacher is also something you can do very freely. Uh, and again, uh, we try to uh, use Slack uh, for that as the, and the primary um, uh, method of, uh, of contact. I saw some notification because Zoom is not very good at this of people raising their hand. I'm trying to see where I can see where are these participants because uh, I have the list, but there's nothing that tells me. When somebody raises a, a hand, I see a notification that flashes for a fraction of a second, but then I don't see in the list of participants any icon or anything that uh, uh, tells me. So uh, ah, it was a test. Okay. So okay, there 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 is some. Well, how can you raise an end? Good question. Um, because I cannot be in the host. When someone's at the end, get to the list of participants. Okay, so I didn't see uh, Enrico because probably he deleted that. So can you tell, uh, how can you raise a hand? Because, okay, Enrico raised a hand right now. Let me check it uh, in the list of participants. Yeah, I see the, the little hand there. And they can lower it or you can lower it yourself. So it's a blue tiny hand. And uh, um, just, uh, um, Enrico, can you tell everybody where you find the comment for raising the hand? There's a button for reason. Okay, I don't have this button because I'm the host. So in the in the in black bar of the application. Okay. Okay, we are all playing with the hands right now. Okay, we are nearly uh, over the time that we have uh, allocated here. So uh, are there any further questions that you want to touch? Okay, so uh, may I ask a question about Node.js? Of course you can. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I would like uh, to ask uh, a question about uh, the role of Node.js because I didn't understand how JavaScript is uh, partially executed on the browser. Uh, in the introduction lesson, you put the list of the browser and the comp yeah. compatibility list, but I didn't get how Node.js is involved and what is the exact role. Because okay. I, I don't know, it's a little bit. Uh, yeah, I, I will. We will build that one piece at a time. So right for the moment, we are ignoring the browsers. For the first uh, couple of weeks, uh, we are discussing JavaScript as a programming language, and for doing the exercises, we are running them into Node.js. And for us, at the moment, Node.js will just be an interpreter. 
like when you're running a script, a shell script, you're running it into bash. So you are a file and, a, and, and an interpreter that will be able to execute those commands. For the moment, uh, we are just at this, uh, say, very basic uh, um, configuration. We use Node, just an interpreter for JavaScript. Uh, then we will move on to JavaScript inside the browser. So the same code will run in the JavaScript interpreter that runs in Chrome or in Firefox or in whatever browser you're using. Uh, and at that point, when you are dealing with JavaScript in the browser, actually, uh, you don't even need a server for the moment. So Node.js doesn't, doesn't work, it's not needed. It's only when you put together the, the, uh, the browser and the, um, the server, uh, then you need to have a small application running on the server, which is able to serve the web pages uh, and to publish the, um, the HTML and the JavaScript to the, to the browser. So at that point, Node.js will be, yes, an interpreter for JavaScript, but uh, it will run an application, we use Express.js, that implements an HTTP server inside that. And, and then we will make it also more complex because uh, besides the, uh, the web server, uh, we will also need to implement some of our server-side application code. Okay, so it's uh, complex. So the architecture of the web is complex, is the, the, the class that I'm going to record this afternoon and publish probably this evening, uh, about having a first picture of the, all the components that are in, in a web architecture. And then we'll try to pick them one by one so I didn't, I didn't want to throw all the complexity of client-server programming, and they wanted to start, this is JavaScript. And then we'll uh, learn how to run JavaScript inside the server and inside the client, and so something about Node.js. We will not go into in depth about Node.js because it's a server-side technology. We will only see the minimum uh, for supporting the client side, which is our main focus. So a lot of... Uh, not JS knowledge about all the packages, dependencies, uh, and packaging, uh, say application and so on, we will, we will uh, skip it and ignore that. So for us, it will be really a minimum. Right now, it's just a tool for checking our JavaScript programs. And then we will uh, have a, um, a better role. Uh, Mustafa is asking the entries methods. Uh, could you explain more, especially the example you did for, oh, yes, yes, of course. So, um, Let me make this a little bigger if I can. Okay, but too much. I hate of uh, Visual Studio Code that when you are increasing the font, it will also increase all the icons, all the other stuff. So, uh, editors, let's just zoom the font of the editor. And just, uh, okay. So, um, Let's usually if I let, let's use a, um, an interactive uh, window, and so I can define an array. Okay, uh, three, nine, eighteen. Let's make it simple. So I have an array, and I can iterate over the array. So with the four of statement for uh, the in index, the value of a. So what I read that I iterate, iterate over the array a, and for every element v takes the value of this of the next item. So I can do a, a console dot log of v, for example. And it will print me three, nine, eighteen, which are the values. Okay, but what if I need to increase the value of the number? So instead of three, or yes, I want to make it four. Instead of nine, I want to make it ten. Instead of eighteen, I want to make it nineteen. Well, so inside the the the, the four, I would have to write something like. Uh, uh, v is equal to v plus one. Hmm? 
Hmm? So the three will become four. And then we close. But sorry, it not, should not be const, of course, it should be let v equal v plus one. And if we print the array, it didn't change. It is not changed because v is a copy of the value from inside the vector. Okay, so so we took the tree, we made a copy of the tree. Three a a zero is three. We make a copy of this number three and we put it into a variable v. Uh, here we increase it so it becomes four and this four is stored into v and this v is now pointing somewhere else let me try to make a, a picture so try that do you see the whiteboard uh, we have uh, a uh, which is made of uh, uh, many slots. Okay, so we have three, we have six. Uh, what's that? You see my memory, nine, eighteen. Uh, nine and 18. Okay, when we iterate uh, during the four, we are creating another variable, which is called V. Hmm? Uh, write that. And why, one, when we iterate, uh, we are at the first iteration, we V will become if we increase v equal v uh, plus one we, we are just modifying this copy for so the array will be not changed if we want to change the array what we need to do is really to change a zero equal to four so i would have to change this not v but a position zero or a position one a position two the index of the array. I need the index of the array. Uh, in this uh, simplified uh, form of the for statement, uh, the index uh, is not available. It, uh, the, um, the iteration only iterates through the values. Okay. This is where the entries method comes into play. Look at the documentation. The entries method returns an iterable, so something like you can iterate over with the for statement of pairs, key value pairs. So at every iteration, you don't have just the value, but you have two variables, a key and the value. In the case of an array, the key is the index. In general, the key can also be used as a key for an object. So that this, the, the, the language written here is more general than what we are seeing right now. So for every iteration, I don't have just the value, but I have a pair, of key value. So it returns two values for every iteration. And these two values, I can assign them to two variables using the, the structuring assignment. So I, this is, a, is, an, is an assignment. It's a, if I write, I can write, for example, I, A is equal for the first time, it will be equal to zero and three. And the second time, IA will be equal to one, which is the index, and then nine. And the third time, I'm assigning IA to uh, two and 18. So this is what's happening here. In this uh, four, we have a couple of variables, I and A. A is the value and I is the index. So the index goes one, 0, 1, 2, 
and the value goes 319, which is the content of the array here. Okay. So in this case, for every iteration, I still have the value, like we, it was called V here, but I can also have the index. So in this case, I have uh, dot entries and uh, the index and the value. I can see, oh, sorry. Uh, maybe I need to close the, the, the whiteboard. And then we share the screen probably. Yeah, so there's only one sharing can be that can run at the same moment. Sorry. So um, okay. So this is what I I was writing. Okay. So for example, in this example, IA is uh, the first uh, variable of the couple is the index zero, one, and two. And the second variable is the value, 3918. So uh, when you, we change it, so instead of writing for V of A, we write a couple index value of A dot entries. So it's extracting for every location a pair of values. And so at this point, we can have uh, uh, A, of course, V is the value. So V plus one is the value that has been increased and we want to store it into the same location where we took it from. And for doing this, we need the, the index I. So that is the reason uh, of, the, of the entries method. And at this point, the array A has been changed. Okay, so you need to use entries whenever you want also the index number or in general, the key, like the documentation here says that returns uh, key value pairs. Uh, the key on the case of arrays is just the index uh, for every entry in your array. Um, we will see next week uh, when you uh, when we learn the. Um, uh, the functional programming that this kind of techniques uh, that there are a lot of methods that are able to take a, a data structure and uh, uh, manipulate it functionally. So with methods that return uh, uh, other IT, um, other objects that they can iterate them, can modify them, and so on. So it's just the the, the, the tip of the iceberg here. Uh, any other questions? So is Marco uh, raising a hand just for trying that or uh, because he needs a, to ask a question? Marco Papalardo? No, I scared him away, sorry. I don't late this session recorded. Yes, it is. It will be on GitHub in, a, in one hour. Oh, sorry, on YouTube in one hour. Okay, so if there are no other questions that come to your mind right now, uh, we no problem, Marco. Uh, we, we will meet next week, same time, same hour, and same place virtual place. Uh, I hope to uh, be able to meet you in person sooner or later, but uh, <laughs> for what's happening outside, uh, it's not very likely that we can meet uh, very soon. I really, really hope that for the exam, everything will be okay. Because where everything we discussed about the exam was in the, uh, under the assumption that we can have the exam here in the lab. Otherwise, don't ask me, I don't know. We will uh, invent something. Huh? Like they say, we are engineers, we solve problems. Okay, so thanks uh, to all of you for the attention. We are open for any kind of discussion or feedback. I will give you information about the, the, the Slack group that we are going to create. 
and uh, see you next week. Thank you.